meaning more inventory on the market, sorry, inventory, inventory. We do this every single time. Inventory, anyway. inventory on the market. Welcome to this casual Thursday evening of the McInnes Marketing Moment, guys. Thank you for joining us this week. Thank you. And we're going to break it up a little bit, actually. So this week, we're actually going to talk about what the market update really is. So if you followed us or various realtors over the months, you'll see a lot of us post a market update. Um, usually it's monthly and it's going back, giving the stats and the figures of what's happened with listings versus sales uh, over the past month once uh, those figures have been released. Now, these are good. However, they don't tell a whole story just because you're looking at something from say January or just from December doesn't mean that you're finding out what the, the trends have been over the past few months. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'm shivering because I'm actually freezing, even though this weather's beautiful. <sighs> but uh, we're gonna break down what the last few months, kind of ending with the end of last year, beginning with this year, and what that's what what trends and what what's been happening over the, the latest few months, we'll say. So, I mean, Jay, why, why don't you take away, let's start at the end of last year. What were we, what were we seeing in terms of, of listings versus sales? And I think what everyone expects to hear is what happened. The news portrayed different aspects of it, but the listing counts uh, for a long time uh, in last year's market were down as well as the sales. Mm -hmm. And then towards the end of the year, listing counts started to climb, uh, which gave more reinforcing, uh, we'll say downward pressure uh, to prices because uh, buyers saw more options coming to market. So they said, well, let's just wait. And the more options we have, we're gonna have that uh, assistance in our buyer's market to uh, negotiate further because there's more options for us on the table. So it come to the end of uh, 2018, we saw the market um, sales numbers were diminishing month over month and listing numbers were diminishing and then hit a point and started to rise, which gave further momentum to that buyer's market. Yeah. Yeah, and then so the the start of this year, so January is is very traditionally a bit of a slower month. It doesn't start to usually kick off until that second or third week. But this year, I think it took a lot of us in the industry by surprise. It actually started happening really fast, and of course, kind of to Jay's point about what you see on the news, you hear it in a in a bit of a different light. So, for example. When you look at the figures, a lot of the figures, they're all generalized. So it would be condos on the west side. Well, you know, an entry level price of 650,000 and below is a very different market to say like a two, $3 million condo on the west side. So they all kind of have their own sub markets within. Plus the news typically focuses on sales numbers total year over year. So sales are down 50% because there were 50% less sales. Yep take place in December, for example, 18 and 17. So, but yeah. yes, and then they generalize obviously the markets. Yeah, so for that entry level point, it, it spiked in January um, to a point, you know, multiple offers, places selling for, I think the, the largest one that I saw in that entry level was like 60,000 above the asking price. Um, places going within a week. And overall though, sales were low compared to the year before. Um, so, it was kind of a bit of a doom and gloom aspect that was put into it. But listings, as it went into Christmas, kind of dropped off as it usually does with the holidays. Then in January, again, we saw a huge spike in listings. Um, sales started to you know, slightly come down, but more on a buoyant level, really. We started to see more of a kind of trajectory like, like that as opposed to moving downward. Uh, and then in February. In February, the listing numbers uh, dropped and the sales numbers spiked substantially. So, yeah, I mean, listings, kind of like Jay said, they've been going up um, towards the end of the year and the start of this year, uh, meaning more inventory on the market. Sorry, invent inventory. We do this every single time. Inventory. Anyway. Inventory on the market. Um, and then sales actually for the first time in quite a while showing, uh, I mean, even a slight a slight upward trajectory when it come when it comes to the amount of sales actually taking place so that shows a couple of things it shows that you know one sales are actually taking place and you know a, a common ground is being met between buyers and sellers 
Uh, and two, there's a lot of people who are, you know, probably either pulling their place off the market because they, they don't have to sell it, they're done with holding out and seeing what happens. Um, there are less people out there willing to test the market. Uh, and on the other side, buyers are more willing to, you know, they've been watching the market for a while, thinking what's going to happen, a price is going to come down. They're now happy with where they've come down to in order to actually move forward and, and make a purchase. Yeah, so that doesn't, like Ben said, that's a, that's a we'll call it a news number, that's a general, the, the general sales period have, have, have inclined and that doesn't necessarily say prices. Um, I definitely wouldn't say prices have taken a, a turn and gone back up. The entry level of the market, as we've seen with a number of the first time buyers that we've worked with recently, um, that segment of the market is, I'd almost say busy again. Yeah. Um, now, I don't believe pricing is back to where it was before things adjusted down. But um, the activity, most importantly, is definitely there. Um, mm -hmm. Multiple offer situations, I mean, you were involved in a few last month, um, and pricing is starting to, to climb up again. We're doing uh, some updates on market values to a number of uh, places. And again, I saw one today in the West End, listed 379, sold in five days for 415. Um, so you're starting to see that resilience again of, of buyers seeing something they want and, and jumping on it. Whereas before, I think the general point of view towards the market was they may see something they like, but they think, well, it's going to be cheaper tomorrow, so let's just wait, wait, wait. And I think, as Ben said, it looks like there's kind of, it's hit a floor. I don't know if it's the floor, but a floor at this point of people saying, okay, the market's been going down now for a year. Mm -hmm. I'll say going down, softening for a year, and um, if it's people are uh, scared that rates are actually gonna jump up, or if it's people are finally ready in the market, or if it's people um, can now afford something closer into town and they're, 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 uh, than they initially could, so they're jumping in while they know they can. Um, whatever those collection of reasons may be, the, the sales numbers in general are, are climbing, which is a good thing. That's the start of showing that resilience come back. Um, because as we know, every new sale is a benchmark. If it's either higher or lower, it's uh, the last comparable sale is always a benchmark, so. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I, the market overall is not climbing upwards by any stretch of the means. That lower kind of entry, or uh, entry level, I should say, in Vancouver of 650,000 below, where that's kind of busy, we're seeing a bit of a bit of a separate market almost take place in that area, and kind of to Jay's point, one's on the market for 379, goes for 415,000, that sets the new benchmark. So anyone in that area who's looking to sell is going to look at that pricing as that's what it sold, that's what I'm going to get, and then they're going to obviously move onwards and upwards. Now, it's not to say the market is hot because sales are moving upwards, not by any stretch of the means. We personally think it's going to buoyant out for or remain buoyant for a while. Prices are going to kind of remain in that similar aspect, and we're just now getting to that point where sellers and buyers are getting more closer on the same page, more willing to kind of have the conversation about negotiations and price and that starts getting the market kind of moving again like one cog at a time if you will yeah and i think as we've seen kind of going out of the million dollar range or over the million dollar price point i think or i should say it's it's still we're seeing turnover but it's still definitely not on an upswing mm -hmm. and the further up you go in price of course uh the less transactions there still are and still the slow, the, the, we'll say buoyancy, because we can't really tell until we get last month's figures. So of course, we're, what, the 22nd now? March? 21st. 21st of March today. Um, we'll Happy belated B-Day, by the way. Thank you so much. Thanks Two so days much. ago, for yes. everyone watching. Um, come kind of the first week of April, we'll be able to see if March actually continued that up spike or if it, mm -hmm. if it dropped down. So we only know kind of in, in month, uh, monthly increments. But from what we're seeing, the entry level this month in March has definitely started to pick up. Um, the sales started in general to pick up last month, and there's still, we'll say, hesitation in the kind of over a million market. Um, from what we're seeing, but obviously we don't see everything, every deal, but when we get the numbers out in early April, it'll be very interesting to see if the market in general has carried or if it's stayed buoyant or, or if it's actually dropped again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's it for this week, guys. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, of course, we'll be keeping you up to date on what's happening um, periodically as we go along anyway. Uh, if you have any questions, 
reach out to us, call, text, email, please do subscribe, leave a review. Um, your feedback is very much welcomed and yeah, drop us a, drop us a follow on social media, McInnes Marketing um, on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Um, Real Benjamin Robinson on Instagram and Facebook and I am Jay McInnes on Instagram. Instagram. Yes. Guys, Thank until next listening. week. Thank you. Bye-bye.